Hello, my loves, to everybody watching this replay. Hello, happy Wednesday. So I have been talking a lot lately about um, living outside resistance. And basically, I've been talking a lot about my modern take on enlightenment, which I think is really, um, is really resonating with people. And it feels like this new layer of myself coming through when I'm talking about this kind of stuff. So again, it's like a modern take on enlightenment and seeing that now coming through in my daily life all the time. So I wanted to share with you another way that I'm seeing this coming through right now. So um, as you all know, Earth is a school, right? Earth is, yeah, I'm sure you know this, that Earth is actually quite advanced and it's really a school and we are learning really, really intense lessons while we're here. And we're, we're always learning, no matter how many times you've come to Earth, I just feel like you are always, there's more. There's just more to learn all the time. And I'm seeing this so much in my own life. And I wanna talk about how I've really come to this realization that enlightenment is just living outside of resistance. If you can live outside of resistance, not create that in your body, not create that in your life, then that's it, like that's literally the answer. And it seems so simple when you talk about it like that, but it's in all of the little choices that you make every single day to choose, constantly choose to accept the present moment and what it wants to bring to you as being exactly what you need. And like that is so much easier to say than to actually do because think about all of the times that you experience like massive triggers or massive frustration or sadness or all of these things and that's, that's, it's important to feel our feelings. We still need to feel our feelings. But this is about that higher consciousness that we all have that accepts whatever the present moment brings to them. So it's all about presence. Okay, that's a first step. Okay, so if you're looking for, like, let's even just say, okay, the path to enlightenment is these steps. Presence. That's the first thing that you should be working on. How can you become more present and get out of here. Because if you're living in your head, you are wasting time, right? If you're living up in your cognitive energy, you are missing everything. You are missing all the magic. And that is the very first step to this modern take on enlightenment is presence. Okay, the second one, once you've got that figured out, and what are some tools for presence like embodiment, trying to feel your life force in your fingertips? And then trying to feel that same life force in your toes and then trying to feel it maybe in the heart chakra and like you really try to feel that little buzzing feeling that's alive inside of your body that is you it is life force it's like the soul is the batteries inside of a doll and the human form is the doll and so the soul has this electric force that animates the body and keeps things going I know I've said this before, but the soul sits in the high heart, you know, below the throat chakra, but above the heart chakra in that high heart and it animates the body from there. Um, and you can feel that animation in your fingers if you really concentrate on that buzzing feeling, right? And then you feel it in your lips, feel it in your heart, feel it in your body. Eventually you could feel it all over your body. And then you could even project that awareness to your aura and further and further. And you'd be surprised how far you can feel. That is a great tip for presence. Also a book recommendation for presence is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, that's super good. So if that's the first step, what's the second step to enlightenment? This modern take on enlightenment would be acceptance. So this is where you stop fighting back about what, the, what life is bringing to you. You just accept it, right? Even if it's hard, even if it's annoying, even if it's not what you planned, even if it's not what you think you want, you just accept it with this like level of trust, this level of surrender that eh, if it's on my path, it's for me in some way, I'll figure it out. It's meant to be here. And then the next step after acceptance is gratitude, being able to move into not just acceptance of the present moment, but actually finding a way to be grateful for that present moment. And again, that is harder, like that is easier said than done. That can be difficult when it is something that feels terrible, like getting sick or, or going through a breakup or losing your job or being forced to move or all of these things that feel so difficult. I've experienced so many of those things in the last year or two. And it's like, but when I look back on those things and those hard things that I've been through, it's so clear that they were all serving my higher self. They were all serving a higher purpose. So can you move from acceptance into gratitude for everything that is coming 
into your experience and, and starting to say to yourself, if it's on my path, it's for me. I may not understand why just yet, but if it's shown up, if it's showing up like this in this moment with me in this present moment, I have to trust that it's for a reason. I don't always have to know what the reason is, but I have to trust that there is a higher reason that it's showing up no matter what it is. And then after gratitude, so we've moved from presence, acceptance, gratitude. That's a big switch right there. Um, And then we move into celebration. Right? Can you celebrate the present moment and all that it is? Can you move into like, like gratitude frequency is really high, but if you move into celebration, it's like bliss. It's like, can you be blissful on the daily? So to me, that's my modern take of enlightenment. The first step is probably the hardest as with most, most things like that presence. So many people are living in their head, especially if you struggle with fight or flight. You know, if you've got fight or flight, PTSD, anxiety, you are guaranteed you are living up here. You've got to come into the heart to live in the present moment. You've got to become more embodied. So I want to talk to you about how this is, I'm being really challenged uh, to find this peace again, to find this, this, this enlightenment again, when these difficult challenges come up. That's why I called this live earth school the puppy trials because i got a new puppy and it is so hard and that might sound silly to somebody going through something really difficult but i'm telling you this is no joke this dog is climbing up the wall trying to eat the blinds like there's always something this dog is insane right but all puppies are and it's like there's so much that has happened um for me in just the few days that I've had this puppy, so many realizations, so many downloads, because I am now using what life brings to me as these really deep lessons and initiations into the next level of enlightenment. So even though it's just a puppy, it's so much more than that. It is like earth school. It is like an advanced class that I'm going through right now. And I'm seeing that what I'm learning from this. And so this is what I wanna encourage you to do. The things that are coming up in the now moment how can you start looking for how they are serving you instead of looking at how they are not serving you to really like refocus yourself on presence acceptance gratitude celebration so for me this was like a huge shift in perspective the first thing that happened is we get this puppy and like everything goes out the window all of my comfort zone my routines like my little happy peaceful life and i didn't realize how attached to that I was so 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 attached to that like you know working from home in a quiet home for myself in the super super high vibrations you know channeling and doing all of these higher dimensional things all day long it's like you are living in a bubble of like just like really peaceful beautiful energy and then this like little puppy demon comes in and destroys that illusion for me and I have to find it again even in that chaos. And so what I've been realizing that this is how this is serving me. So puppy trials, how this puppy advanced class of earth is serving me is it is teaching me to hold more space in my body and in my life for chaos. Like how much can you hold more? Right. And I can really see how this is going to serve me personally, but also serve me professionally. Am I able to hold more stress or more chaotic energy, things that are going against the grain, things that are not going as I would like them to or as as I would like to plan things all the time to be. So it's like holding more chaos without going into dysregulation of my nervous system, without going into stress, without going into victim mentality without going into all of those things hello everybody joining um so that's the first thing that i'm learning from this is how to hold more chaos how to hold more energy how to hold more imperfection without immediately spiraling into i'm stressed i'm frustrated i'm this i am that right so that's like clicked in the next thing that i'm learning is obviously patience a lot of patience and a lot of compassion for this tiny little baby puppy soul that is like doing his best and is just like what the hell planet am i on right now he has no fucking clue what is going on at all so lots of patience lots of compassion and again i can see how that lesson is going to serve me personally professionally in all the ways of my relationship Another thing is like losing my routine has taken me out of my safety zone. And I've worked very hard to heal fight or flight and my PTSD. 
And a part of that is having this really calm routine where I don't like a lot of loud noises and I, I get to live in this really calm, blissful state. And, you know, my life is really beautiful and, and my routine is very all about serving myself and, and being this like running this amazing business. And then I have this little soul come crashing in and just tear it all down. I can't work when I want to work. Uh, because he's screaming or peeing or pooping or having a, a freak out or trying to eat things that will kill him like he's just all over the place and so I feel like you know you it's like taken from you that safety zone that comfort zone of this routine that I've built is just taken away and it's like oh my god who am I without that it's like we get so attached to things I've gotten so attached to that routine or that inner peace or that calm, quiet environment. And as I'm even saying this, he's literally being so loud. I wonder if you can hear, he's like tearing up a toy right now. So all of this is serving me so much personally because as a person, I want to learn how to hold more chaos. I want to learn how to build resilience in my system. Right? Because as extremely, extremely sensitive energetically, it's difficult for me to just go to the grocery store. Like I go to the grocery store and I'm like done for the day. Unless I'm really like strongly protecting myself with these energy bubbles and energetic shields. But like that's how sensitive I am. And so to have this now into my home, into my sacred space, it's like, whoa, this is like a huge, huge lesson. So think about what think about what's coming up in your own personal present moments that is feeling like a struggle that is feeling like a challenge that is asking you to stretch that is asking you to like oh hold more uncomfortable feelings and to stretch and understand that that is serving you and that is only going to be so 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 good for you later on um personally professionally in your relationships it's all for you and also think about what a student does if Earth is a school and all of these things are lessons, think about what it's like to be a student and try to apply that to your life. Because students have to get really uncomfortable. They get given all of this information that they don't understand, and then they're expected to learn it, and then they're tested on it, and then they're challenged, and they have all of these like projects and homework and all of these things that they have to figure out on their own. And it's like, it's, a, it's definitely hard on the nervous system to be a student. And you are experiencing that right now, speak of the devil, you are experiencing that right now in this school of earth. So think about how are you a student? What are you being tested on? If you're being tested on it, it's because you already received the material, right? Like you were already given the information at some point during an experience in your life and now you're being tested did you get it are you have you learned that lesson are you ready can we move on to the next lesson and lessons in earth school will continue to cycle over and over and over until you get them right so the sooner you get the lesson the sooner you get it correct the sooner you have the correct not reaction but um i mean it kind of is like a reaction as soon as you have the right like you can return to peace no matter what and you see the lesson and you move into presence, acceptance, gratitude, celebration, that lesson goes away and you get given the next one. And if your lessons are continuing to cycle over and over and over, you didn't get it. So go back to the drawing board. Okay, how can I be more present? How can I accept this? How can I be more grateful for this? How can I celebrate this? And all of that comes from perspective. How can you think about it as it is serving me, not victim mentality. It's like, how is this serving me? There is a way that it is serving me and, and what is that way? And search for that, right? Search for that information. So I really wanna encourage you to, to understand that you are a student of earth. Oh my God. You are a student of earth. You are right now learning or being tested or doing some kind of homework or you know expected to do some kind of project. When you get it, when you, when you pass, when you, what? You're fine. When you pass whatever exam you're being given, you get the next piece. But until you do that, you're kind of stuck in this cycling pattern, right? So I really encourage you to use this um, like shortcut, what I'm calling my modern take on enlightenment. And it is presence, acceptance, gratitude, 
celebration. But remember, none of that can happen without the proper perspective. And the, and the wrong perspective is victim mentality. Victim mentality is a sleeping pill. Okay, you'll go right back to bed. It's not going to help you at all. Um, but a modern, pers or sorry, like an enlightened perspective is, huh, how is this serving me? If you can't celebrate it yet, then can you get curious? Can you at least get curious like, hmm, I don't know why this is showing up, but I trust. I'm going to continue to be curious about what the reason is that this has come into my reality. I'm going to continue to be curious about how this might be serving me, even if I don't understand it yet. Okay, so get curious if you can't celebrate or be grateful yet. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you is something that my mentor shared with me and it has changed my life. This is really important, so listen up, even though the dog's all over me. This is like a five minute exercise that has literally changed my life. And I just wanna thank, I am Jenna Holloway. <laughs> she was um, somebody that really, I've been working with, like I'm, I've extended us from six months. I'm gonna be working with her for a full year now because she's so amazing. Orion, stop eating that plug. Oh my God. Um, here's, the, here's the little, it's a nighttime mini routine that will probably take you less than five minutes and it will change your life. And this is how you train your sovereign creator, okay? So this is how you train the version of you, the higher version of you that is the sovereign creator, not the victim, the sovereign creator. Stop it. Um, here's the, and, and again, go follow I am Jenna Holloway because she taught me this and it's been amazing. At night, every single night, I have a little notebook beside my bed. I will write down five things that I am grateful for that happened that day. Five good things. She always says, what's good? Just write down what's good. This, if you've had a really hard day, makes you search for things that were good that day. Like, oh, well, my PB&J toast tasted really good. Okay, if that's all you have that day, that's amazing. I've written that down multiple times because I've had hard days, right? But what you're doing by writing down five things that were good that day, okay, at the end of the day, what you're doing is you are retraining your subconscious, which is the sovereign creator, you are retraining your subconscious to look for things to celebrate. Celebration is that super, super high vibe frequency. That is that enlightenment that we talked about. That is the goal to get there. You're moving through the proper perspective through presence, through acceptance, through gratitude to celebration. Here's a shortcut to that celebration. Write down five things that were good that day. Here's the next tip. Don't stop there. This next one is big. After I write down five things that I was grateful for that day, even if it's hard to find them because I had a hard day, I do it anyway, I find something like, oh, the breeze felt so good when I stepped outside. Whatever it is, just find things that you are grateful for, things that were good. All you're doing is training your, your sovereign creator within to look for that, okay? The next thing is write a paragraph right underneath that on the same page about how good tomorrow is gonna be. So say something like, tomorrow is gonna feel so calm, so peaceful, so flowy. I'm really gonna feel present. And I'm gonna see the bigger pattern, the bigger plan behind my life. And my new puppy is going to communicate with me about his potty needs. And we're gonna start getting on the same page, right? So whatever it is that you wanna experience that day, whether you have an event and you want to, oh, Ryan, stop that. Let that go. He's now biting the cords to my leg. Whether you have an event coming up and you wanna write, oh my God, my event tomorrow is gonna to be so powerful. People are gonna resonate so hard, whatever it is. It's just a short paragraph about how good the next day is gonna be. So again, what you're doing is tra training your subconscious. No, that is gold, God. What you're doing is training the subconscious, which is the sovereign creator, to now expect things to celebrate. Okay, so the first thing when you're writing down five things that you're grateful for or that were good that day, it's training the, the sovereign creator that you are to look for the things to celebrate, even in the hard times. And then the next step by taking, by just writing that short, short paragraph, like this is so easy to do and it will literally change your life. You write that short paragraph about how good the next day is gonna be. You are now uh, like, manifesting, but it's so far beyond manifestation. This is like the sovereign creator vibes. You are letting your subconscious know, training your subconscious and that, and that sovereign creator that 
we are going to have things to celebrate tomorrow. And here's what they're going to be. And I can't tell you how many times I write that paragraph and I go back and look at it the next day and it comes through, it comes true exactly, or at least a lot of it, right? As much as it can in my reality. So please take this, um, little, little training about how to become the sovereign creator about modernizing what enlightenment really is about understanding that you are in earth school you are a student right now and by looking at all of the things that are happening in your daily life the present moment which you now live in not your head as serving you how is it serving me get curious so that you can celebrate it just like this little guy here this is a time for an intro i think this is orion orion look right here what's this this is there you, this is orion also known as Dobby. I think you can see why. <laughs> um, he is a Saluki, which is a very rare breed of dog. Um, he is one of the old, or no, actually he is the oldest breed in the world. And they are, no, and they are um, from ancient Egypt. They would sit at like alongside the pharaohs at their thrones and they were engraved. They were the first dogs to be seen engraved in the tombs of the pharaohs. They were royal. They're called the royal dogs of Egypt. This is the oldest dog breed in the world. So I cannot wait to hear from this little soul once he stops being retarded puppy. Um, I cannot wait to hear from this little soul all the stories that he's going to have to share with me. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot. But for now, this is Orion. This is my lesson right now. This is my lesson in patience, compassion. This is my lesson in holding more space for chaos. This is my lesson in having to let go of the attachments I had to my routine, to my peace, to my like s comfort zone, my safety zone, having to let go of all of that and still find a way to be okay. Still find a way, still find myself in those moments, right? So anyway, I'm gonna take him out and hope that he goes to the bathroom outside instead of inside for the 1000th time. And I hope that some of this was helpful to you and um, thank you all for being here. I'll talk with everybody soon. Bye.